well everyone i hope i'm audible and visible can you all give me a quick thumbs up if my audio video is fine can everyone give me a quick thumbs up amazing so very nice let's start with the today's session and uh, we have a lot of mcq with us which will help us understand the topic better so i'm dr cheshta agarwal your need pg educator in the best online platform that is an academy uh, we provide an academy at an academy of plus subscription and an iconic plus give you an access to an academy live classes and iconic give you an access to both an academy and prep ladder now on an academy we have a unlock series which is going on currently where you can get an academy access by using the code cheshta10 and this offer which was only till 22nd it has extended to 29 that is today so please use this code to get 20% discount on all the type of an academy subscription okay we have new batches starting this is inict batch uh, starting from 21st of july we have focus fmg batch starting from july 11th and we have neat pg batch starting on uh, from 6th of or st already started for the 6th month of the total duration please give me a thumbs up if my audio video is fine you can use this code my code cheshta10 that is c h e s t a 10 and get your an academy subscription today please use this code and get your an academy subscription today so let us start with the today's uh, first question i hope everybody is ready for the first uh, question of the today's session all of you can answer this question a 50 year old lady diagnosed with breast cancer who underwent chemotherapy presents with hair loss after 3 week what is this pattern of hair loss known as anybody can tell me the answer blacky bharat abhinandan very nice please remember the correct answer of this question is option number 3 whenever you have chemotherapy induced whenever you have chemotherapy induced hair loss you will have anagen effluvium how does chemotherapy work chemotherapy it works on rapidly dividing cells so in your hair the growth phase is anagen phase so you have rapidly dividing hairs in the anagen phase of your hair cycle so if you take chemotherapy you tend to lose your hair in the anagen phase so that is very important and the answer here is anagen effluvium recently in neat pg 2022 we got a question on telogen effluvium post covid hair fall which started after a lag period of 3 month similar to that post malaria post typhoid pregnancy if there is a lag of 3 month that is telogen effluvium okay next question what is the correct answer here falls about trichorexis invaginata bamboo hair ball socket deformity associated with neutrogen syndrome or abnormal melanin synthesis in the hair shaft what is false about trichorexis invaginata please remember the correct answer of trichorexis invaginata is option number what is it it is the hair shaft defect in which one part of the hair enters the other part of the hair so this type of deformity is called as ball socket deformity bamboo hair deformity or trichorexis invaginata it is one of the very characteristic feature of neeterton syndrome what are the other features of neeterton syndrome these patients have erythroderma 
or atopic dermatitis first second they have ichthyosis linearis circumscripta and lastly they have trichorexis invaginata trichorexis invaginata so the only correct statement is abnormal melanin synthesis in the hair shaft clear can i get a quick uh, thumbs up next please tell me the answer of this question if you look at this image if you look at this image this is a very characteristic image of what is known as granuloma annular it's a very characteristic image of what is called as granuloma annular now granuloma annular is a condition where you have collagen degeneration and these degenerated collagens it forms a granules these granules will appear somewhat like this can you see so about granuloma annular all are true except please remember the correct answer is option number 4 they are not ulcerative you will see them like this annular lesion skin color they are mainly seen in diabetes even they are seen in those who are exposed to sun a lot because sun also causes damage to the elastic fibers steroids are the treatment of choice because these granulomas are because of local inflammation so that inflammation can be taken care by steroids you will not get the ulcerative lesions in the patients of granuloma annular next question what is the correct answer patient with purple blue asymptomatic lesions on the face sun exposed areas what is the likely diagnosis very nice this is not dle this is a very characteristic image of lichen planus pigmentosus this is a very classical image of what is called as lichen planus pigmentosus which is known as lpp lichen planus pigmentosus now here what happens patient very characteristically develops the damage to the stratum basale and the pigment falls in the dermis when the pigment falls into dermis it gives a bluish appearance to the lesion very classical of lichen planus pigmentosus next question anybody a 55 year old farmer with black mole on the cheek which increase in the size which becomes irregular invade the deep tissue what could be the diagnosis what could be the diagnosis the answer to this question is option number 4 Now please remember there are two type of melanomas the one with horizontal spread and the one with vertical growth spread the horizontal growth spread and the one with vertical growth spread so this is the epidermis and dermis in the horizontal growth spread the spread is like this horizontal it is horizontal spread 
first the whole thickness of the epidermis will fill and then the cells malignant cells will reach the dermis but in vertical growth the lesion will start to spread in the dermis soon the deep invasion is more the example of horizontal spread is superficial spreading time lentigo maligna type and acral type well the example of vertical is nodular melanoma it is nodular melanoma and please remember the answer here is also nodular melanoma because they are clearly mentioning that the spread is in the deeper tissue clear anyone has any confusion in this very important question superficial spreading lentigo maligna acral lentiginous and nodular type of melanoma next question black ki black shavan zool anyone nevus of eto becus nevus freckles mongolian spot which of the following are epidermal melanin disease which of the following are the epidermal melanin disease very nice now the melanocytic proliferations can be on two locations the melanocyte proliferation can be in two locations one is epidermal melanin proliferation called as epidermal melanin disease and another is dermal melanin proliferation called as dermal melanin disease obviously as the name suggests in epidermal melanin disease the lesions are in the epidermis and a very popular example which we usually read under this is baker's nevus and lentigen freckle while under the dermal melanin disease we have three example nevus of porta nevus of eto and mongolian spot and mongolian spot so nevus of ota nevus of eto and mongolian spot clear everyone shravan blacky black zool if anyone has any confusion please let me know so what are the epidermal melanin disease it is only becker's nevus and freckles so answer number 1 becomes the correct answer 2 and 3 nevus of eto is not a epidermal melanin disease it is a dermal melanin disease so look at this when you see a bluish color the dermal melanin diseases are always blue so this is a very classical image of nevus of ota on the distribution of trigeminal nerve if you see bluish discoloration unilateral even the mucosa is involved while if you see similar condition in the scapular region this is known as nevus of eto and if you see the similar condition over the lumbosacral region it is known as a mongolian spot okay so i hope this point is clear to everyone next Who diagnoses a patient with vitiligo based on history, physical examination, and Woods lab examination? Which of the following tests is also warranted?
Anyone? We diagnosed a patient. You diagnosed a patient of vitiligo. Now the question is, we have a case of vitiligo. They are asking you what other test you will perform. Please remember, vitiligo, which is an autoimmune disease. It's an autoimmune disease. And please remember, this is associated with a lot of conditions, especially the other autoimmune diseases, the commonest being thyroid disease. So if you get a patient of vitiligo, the first thing is you have to look for the other associated autoimmune diseases and the most common or frequent association is seen with thyroid disease. So you will do a full thyroid study. Okay. Next question. Please answer this question. A 15 centimeter hyperpigmented macules on an adolescent male undergoes changes such as coarseness, growth of hair, acne. What will be the diagnosis? Please remember the correct answer of this question is Baker's nevus. Now look at this image, very amazing image. In this image, you can see that over the scapular region or over the shoulder region, there is a brown pigment. Can you see? This is a brown pigment. And over this brown pigment, you can see a lot of hair. Hypertrichosis is seen. So, hyperpigmented lesion associated with hypertrichosis and in few cases, even acne form eruption, it's a very characteristic example of Baker's nevus. It is not sebaceous nevus. Sebaceous nevus is completely different. Tane. So, Shravan, Dibin and Blacky Black, please remember the answer here is option number 2, that is Baker's Nevis. Next question. Forty-year-old lady with brown patch on her cheek chin. She is not on any regular treatment except for the birth control pill. She observed that it has increased after the first delivery and also after the second. The thyroid function test is normal. Which statement is correct? brown patch on her cheek chin so can what can be the diagnosis anyone first tell me what can be the diagnosis look at the image look at the image there is pigmentation over the nose over the cheek and over the upper lip so this is looking like a very classical image of melasma in melasma think about the other options unrelated to OCP no please remember melasma is multifactorial The factors are OCP, pregnancy, sunlight, thyroid disease, drugs. These are some of the causes of melasma. So it is related to OCP. Option number one becomes wrong. It fades away with time? No, it will never heal spontaneously. It will never heal spontaneously. It might exacerbate with next pregnancy. This is true. And it needs other endocrine evaluation. The answer is no. It do not need any other endocrine evaluation. Clear? Is this clear? Let's move to the next question.
What is the answer? Anybody can tell me? Okay. First of all, tell me what is the diagnosis here? What is the diagnosis? The diagnosis here is vitiligo. The diagnosis here is vitiligo. And why do I say so? Because please remember the margins of vitiligo is never smooth. They are always like this, feathery. And the reason for this is because it is the one melanocyte which supply color to multiple areas. So this is supplying the area to this. This is supplying the this area. This is supplying this area. So if one is gone, just imagine if this is gone, then this part will go. And if this is gone, this part will go. So you will see feathery margins wherever you have vitiligo. You never see smooth like this because the distribution of melanocyte is not smooth. So one thing is clear that it is a vitiligo patient. Now the question is what is the drug which you will never use in a patient of vitiligo? Tell me what is the mechanism of vitiligo? It was autoimmune T-lymphocyte mediated damage, right? It was autoimmune T-lymphocyte damage. Autoimmune Now, if you want to take care of vitiligo, you need to suppress these T lymphocytes. So, the best modality available to you is immunosuppression or immunosuppressives. You can give clobetasol, which is a steroid immunosuppressive. You can give calcin urine inhibitors, that is tetrolimus, or you can give soralins, that is methoxylin. But what is the role of tretinoin? Will you give tretinoin in these individuals? Do we have any role of tretinoin? The answer is no. We do not give tretinoin because there is no role of tretinoin in these conditions. Clear all of you? We don't have any role of tretinoin in these conditions. Tretinoin works by keratolysis. It works by keratolysis. It works by keratolysis. So we don't have much role here. Clear everyone? Tanya, Manish, Blackie Black, Nikhil, Shravan, Manish. I hope this point is clear to all of you. Next question. What is the answer here? A child has hyperpigmented patch with hairs on her cheek since birth. The diagnosis. Can it be Baker's nevus? If I write option number 5, can it be Baker's nevus also? Can it be Baker's nevus? Yes or no? Anybody can tell me the answer. Can it be Baker's nevus? Please remember, it cannot be Baker's nevus because Baker's nevus occurs only after puberty. It has androgen receptors which becomes active only after puberty. So that is not right. Okay. The correct answer here is option number one. Congenital melanocytic nevus. It is actually giant congenital melanocytic nevus. Why I am calling it giant because when the size is more than 20 cm and when there is associated hypertrichosis, you classify it under giant congenital melanocytic nevus. And please remember, this condition is pre-malignant. So you have to counsel the patient that you have to counsel the patient that they have to be on a regular follow up so that if there is any sudden change which is observed can be taken care of early ok any sudden change can be taken care of early Kushi, Manish, Dream, Feba, Zul, Sandhya, IPS
it is known as pre it is a pre malignant condition what changes tanya the the lesion might change okay see sometimes what happens the benign lesions get converted to malignant so what are the clues that these benign lesions are converting to malignant there can be change in size of the lesion color of the lesion the borders becomes more ill defined or irregular so this change or this evolution will give you an idea that this benign lesion is converting to malignant okay and that is why you need to ask the giant congenital melanocytic nevi patients to have a regular follow up so that if there is any sudden change in any of size color shape you can take care of it on time clear tanya yes you are right the answer here is nevus depigmentosus it is a well defined patch on the thigh in a newborn the hint is the rough margin which you see here it has a very classical serrated margins which will give you an idea that you are dealing with nevus acromicus what is the answer to this question A two-year-old boy of non-consanguineous parentage complains of progressive hair loss. Sorry, presented with progressive abdominal pain, pallor, recurrent fever, on and off discharge. On examination, the child has a grade three malnutrition, at silvery grey scalp hair, white eyelashes, skin, iris, retina, and so skin and the ocular features are normal. Can you tell me what can be the answer here? Please remember, this is a very characteristic description of Griselli syndrome. Now we have divided the hypopigmentary disorders into congenital and acquired. There are a lot of congenital disorders like oculocutaneous albinism, Chidakigashi syndrome, Piebaldism, Wardenburg, and Griselli syndrome. Now remember that Griselli syndrome, the eyes are always normal. Skin. may or may be deep may or may not be depigmented but hairs are always depigmented that is a very characteristic feature of griselli syndrome and that is what is given here which is giving us a clue chidaikigashi syndrome is a variant of oculocutaneous albinism with a very classical list gene defect so in these in individuals you will see the decreased color in the eyes the decreased colors in the skin hair as well as you will see recurrent infections because of abnormal function of neutrophils in piebaldism and wardenburg syndrome you will see a characteristic white forelock of skin as well as there is leukotrichia in wardenburg syndrome there is an additional feature of congenital deafness sensory neural deafness so please remember all these points are very very important for you to remember clear if anybody has any confusion please let me know please tell me the correct answer of this question what is the correct answer parent of a 5 year old boy and a 2 year old girl complained of white patches in both the children since birth on examination we have a discrete hyperpigmented skin colored macule which were interspread within the depigmented macules on the body a well circumscribed white forelock in the mid frontal region 
with depigmented macules on the middle of the forehead was also noticed in both the children what can be the diagnosis what can be the diagnosis anyone now here the hint is white forelock so the answer becomes pi baldism understood the answer becomes pi baldism a uh, bagishti griselli syndrome is a syndrome where the hairs are always white skin can be white or depigmented or can be normal and eyes are always normal so if you get any combination like that think about griselli syndrome in chidakigashi syndrome you will see involvement of eyes and skin always okay so that is how you differentiate between chidakigashi and griselli syndrome next question A 22 year old woman developed small itchy veins after physical exertion walking in the sun eating hot spicy food and when she was angry what is the most likely diagnosis what is the most likely diagnosis anybody can tell me the answer here so whenever she takes itchy veins or whenever uh, she takes hot spicy food she goes under sun and she is angry please remember doing all these three things increases the core body temperature okay now when the core body temperature increases what happens it sends sends the signal to the hypothalamus in the hypothalamus what happens we have a pre optic area which sends it and it sends the signal through cholinergic pathway the post ganglionic cholinergic pathway is activated and this will cause cholinergic urticaria area or small itchy veins this will cause small itchy veins clear all of you next what is the answer here anybody can tell me the correct answer man takes peanuts develop tongue swelling strider hoarseness of voice what is the probable diagnosis engine rotic edema foreign body in the larynx parapharyngeal abscess foreign body in the bronchus please remember its answer of engine neurotic edema so i think everybody is right here bagishri doremon kushi feba Lokesh, Sai, Tanya. Next question. what is the answer here please read this question very very carefully a 40 year old man presented with intermittent upper abdominal pain for four month episodic hot flushes involving the face upper chest for two month water is stool five to six episodes per day for one month he had dry cough for eight days he had no comorbid illness and the family history was not significant the investigation shows urinary 
5 HIAA value of more than 9 mg per 24 hours in a patient. You were called for evaluation of dermatological features. What is the diagnosis? Very nice. The correct answer of this question is option number 3. Now, this is a very classical image of pellagra. And because we see a urinary 5 HI hydroxyindole acetic acid, which is a signifying marker of the carcinoid syndrome, which is one of the cause for acquired vitamin B3 deficiency or niacin deficiency. In these patients, you see very classical photodermatitis. Can you see this image? This is what? The area involved on the neck. This is what? Castle's necklace. Only the exposed part. So, this is possible that at this area, there is clothes. So, only the exposed part is involved. Other than this, other than dermatitis, they can develop diarrhea. They can develop dementia. So, diarrhea, dementia and dermatitis. And if they are not taken care of, they can even give rise to or they can end up to death. What is the answer? A child with oral lesions shows oral vascularization. We have suspected a deficiency and can you tell me which deficiency we are thinking of here? Very nice. You can see in this patient that we have angular, angular stomatitis. We can even see glossitis. And both these favors the diagnosis of riboflavin or vitamin B2 deficiency. Vitamin B2 deficiency. Next question. Six-year-old child who has been irritable since 15 days now refuses to walk, seems to have tenderness in both of his legs. He has petechiae on his arm. Mucosal membrane has a small cut that have not healed well. And the radiograph of the leg reveals generalized bony atrophy with epiphyseal rare affection. The child is having the deficiency of DASH. Thymine, pyridoxin, vitamin C or vitamin D. Anybody can tell me the answer? So what is the answer here? You can see that there is a very classical gum bleeding. You can see that there is a very classical gum bleeding. And what is this perifollicular hemorrhages? Around the hairs you can see some hemorrhages. All these is very classical of vitamin C deficiency scurvy. You develop atrophy of the epiphyseal part. This is known as Wimbarger ring sign. So please remember this is a Wimbarger ring sign. Uh, Bhageshri to decrease this effect try to do maximum MCQs because when you do maximum MCQs this mistakes which you do it 
decreases the risk of marking the question wrong decreases because more you practice more you will know that okay these are the points where you are making your mistake so try to do it regularly anyone next question psoriatic patient on topical treatment sustained sunburn on his left cheek and left forearm one month later he developed a flare up of psoriasis and had to put on systemic treatment soon after starting the prescribed drug for psoriasis the manifestations reappeared the features of sunburn reappeared anybody can tell me the answer which is that drug which have caused the reappearance of the sunburn features which this patient already had very nice this phenomena is known as radiation recall phenomena and please remember this radiation recall phenomena is seen with methotrexate which is one of the preferred drug for psoriatic patients when you give this methotrexate the history of any radiation if the patient had the patient will start developing the similar features again called as radiation recall okay infant with severe itching irritability generalized erythematous papule pustules vesicles involving the face palm soles history of intense nocturnal itching with web space involvement was present in the mother identify this patient's condition atopic dermatitis kbs seborrhea seborrheic dermatitis or papular urticaria what is the correct answer tanya lokesh sachin anisha feba doramon the answer is very nice scabies the presence of itching in the night with family history and on clinical examination you would see some papule pustules and the lesions are severely itchy all these gives you a hint that you are dealing with a patient of scabies moving to the next question it's a little lengthy question but i think we have done a similar question in the past also Sixty-five-year-old man with an asymptomatic erythematous swelling on his right ear, which has been gradually progressing for fifteen years. There is a red-brown infiltrated plaque on the ear lobe just above. You can see a very classical atrophic appearance. Here also it is seen. Can you see this atrophy here? A very characteristic feature is PPD is positive. what is the diagnosis please remember it's a classical case of cutaneous tb 
इट्स अ वेरी क्लासिकल केस ऑफ क्यूटेनियस ट्यूबर क्लोसिस अ वेरी वेरी क्लासिकल केस ऑफ क्यूटेनियस ट्यूबर क्लोसिस बिकॉज देर इज प्रेजेंस ऑफ एटीफी विथ पॉजिटिव पी पी डी नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन प्लीज आंसर द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन What is the correct answer here? A 67-year-old woman. Is there any issue right now? Am I audible and visible to all of you? Okay, fine, fine. So I think it got stuck in between. Please remember, this is a very interesting question of psoriasis. Now, what is given in the question that we have nail changes, leukonychia, crumpling, onychomycosis, hypertrichosis. and in addition to that what we have we have joint features with a positive family history of similar condition in the family please remember this gives you an idea that you are dealing with a patient of psoriasis in sorat arthritis you can have involvement of nail the risk is 90% we can even get a positive family history of either skin disease or the joint disease so please remember this is a very important question with respect to psoriasis moving to the next question a mother who was 50 year old had several soft tissue cutaneous nodules on the body including the head and neck we had multiple hyperpigmented macule she did not have any systemic problem in the organ of her body or any oral manifestation all her offspring had similar lesions in the variable size and frequency and during examination we saw new formation of soft masses on her back which of the following statement would be false which of the following statement would be false can you tell me the answer anyone khushi razi bagishri lokesh what is the correct answer of this question what is the correct answer of this question If you look at this image, let let let's just have a look on this image. Can you see? The, there is some hyperpigmented macule which is present somewhere here. There is small soft sessile nodules here, and there is one large nodule here. What is this? This is a very classical image of neurofibroma patient, neurofibromatosis type one. In neurofibromatosis type one, please remember, you can get. a large size mass which is known as plexiform neurofibroma so multiple hyperpigmented macules were present since birth yes so they are talking about cafe au lait macule they are present since birth autosomal dominant this is also true neurofibromatosis is an autosomal dominant condition and we do slit lamp to look for iris leash nodules but what about option number 2 please remember plexiform neurofibroma it is considered as one of the diagnostic criteria it is considered to be one of the diagnostic criteria okay so this is an example of neurofibromatosis type 1 not tuberous sclerosis nf type 1 next question Please tell me the correct answer here. A 50-year-old woman with a painless swelling in her left foot. The swelling started after a banal penetrating injury on the sole. X-ray images shows multiple osteolytic lesions of teres. Patient reports granules discharging through the lesions. What is the diagnosis? Fifty-year-old woman with painless swelling in her left foot. The swelling started after a banal penetrating injury on the sole. 
which of the following is the correct answer very nice it's a very classical image of u mycetoma you have a triad of swelling then there is sinus discharge and then there is granules which comes out so swelling sinus discharge and granules which comes out if the granules are black in color it is a very classical u mycosis very classical u mycosis if the granules which comes out is black in color okay and if the granules which comes is yellow in color with a classical triad you have to consider it to be a patient of actinomycosis next question it's a little long question i want everyone to please read it carefully Sixty-eight-year-old male with who presented to the emergency room with progressive bullous and erosive skin lesions involving the whole body. Two weeks earlier, the patient visited the ambulatory clinic with painful oral ulcers. At that time, we had a bilateral supraclavicular lymph node, which was observed. And when we prescribed the fine needle aspiration study, we found out that the patient is a case of squamous cell carcinoma. on doing the biopsy we could see that there is supravesal acantholysis with bullous cleft formation what is the diagnosis what could be the diagnosis bullous pemphigoid epidermolysis bullosa dystrophica paraneoplastic pemphigus or secretorial pemphigus please tell me the correct answer here what is the correct answer sachin bhageshri Ringpu, Prakash, Tanya. Bullous pemphigoid, epidermolysis, bullosa dystrophica, paraneoplastic pemphigus, or secretorial pemphigoid. What is the correct answer? What is the correct answer? So please remember, in a patient with a background of neoplasm, if you see the features similar to that of pemphigus, that is supra basal cleft. This is a case of paraneoplastic pemphigus. Paraneoplastic pemphigus, the most frequent associations are with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. The most frequent associations are with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, chronic lymphocytic leukemia. non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, chronic lymphocytic leukemia, then thymoma, and Kesselman's disease. Kesselman's disease. Kesselman's disease. These are the four associations that you see with the patients of paraneoplastic pemphigus. A male patient with cryptorchidism presents with large, dirty brown scales of the body flexures. There is hypergranulosis and steroid surfactant deficiency. What is the probable diagnosis here? What is the probable diagnosis? A male with cryptorchidism presents with large brown scales on the body flexures. skin biopsy shows hypergranulosis and steroid surfactant deficiency the probable diagnosis is <clears throat> anyone prakash tanya zul A male child with cryptorchidism presents with large, dirty brown scales on the body flexures. What is the answer? Please remember the correct answer is X-linked ichthyosis. Ichthyosis vulgaris has filaggrin deficiency, but this is an X-linked ichthyosis patient. Next,
What is the most likely investigation to support the patient's diagnosis? What is the most likely investigation to support the diagnosis? Examination of slit lamp, measurement of intraocular tension, examination of fundus, retinal artery angiography, etc. Patient with seven irregular hyperpigmented macule. So what does it tell you? It tells you that you are dealing with neurofibromatosis type 1. These are capeole macule. These are axillary frackling cross, cross sign. The next thing is we will do a slit lamp examination to look for the presence of iris leash nodule. Next question. Cell cultured from a patient with this disorder exhibit low activity for nucleotide excision repair and this is an autosomal recessive genetic condition which includes sensitivity to sunlight, subsequent formation of multiple skin cancers, premature death. What is the answer? Very nice, Bhagishri, Prakash, Doramon. Uh, previous question, you want me to repeat this one? What is the problem in this question? See, this is a patient with seven irregular hyperpigmented macules. This is cafe ole macule with multiple small hyperpigmented macules in the axilla. So this becomes the, what is this? This is the axillary frackling. The next thing which you have to do is you have to look for the slit skin smear so that you can find out the iris leash nodules. Okay. So that is a case of neurofibromatosis. We have different features in NF. So this is simply a question which will help you tell that what is the next investigation you can do to confirm your diagnosis. In this question, it is clearly mentioned that we had a nucleotide excision repair defect process which is presenting with sensitivity to sunlight, skin cancers and premature death. What can be the diagnosis? The answer to this question is zero derma pigmentosa. Zero derma pigmentosa. It is a DNA repair disorder. DNA repair defect disorder. The repetitive mechanisms are defective. The repetitive mechanisms are defective. The next question is here. Please answer this question. The image shows certain changes in the conjunctiva commonly found in the DNA repair defect disorders. What is the answer? Now, if you look at this image, if you look at this image, just have a look over here. If you look at this image, you can see some teal injectasias. You can see some teal injectasias and in addition to that, we have clearly mentioned that you have a DNA repair defect. So this is a very classical example of ataxia teal injectasia. It's a very classical example of ataxia teal injectasia. A very classical example of ataxia teal injectasia. Clear? Can I get a quick thumbs up from all my dear students if this point is clear? The answer to this question is option number 4. Progressive cerebellar degeneration is something which you see very frequently in these individuals. Next question. Mother reports history of in utero child death, hyperpigmented atrophic linear lesion. The child was girl and all these features were presenting in a linear pattern. All these features were presenting in a linear fashion. What is the answer? Very nice. 
इट्स अ वेरी क्लासिकल एग्जाम्पल ऑफ इनकॉन्टिनेंशिया पिगमेंट आई विच इज अ नीमोजीन डिफेक्ट हेयर द डिजीज अकर्स इन द लाइन्स ऑफ ब्लैश कोज Here the disease occurs in the lines of blast cores. Okay, you will have vesicles, which soon forms. What does vesicles forms? It forms hyperkeratotic lesions, then hyperpigmented lesions, and the last is hypopigmented lesions. So that is the sequence for the lesions. so with this we are done with today's session i hope everybody have enjoyed i request each and every one of you to please give me a quick thumbs up if you like this class i want everyone to give me a quick thumbs up if you want to subscribe an academy please remember we are still going on with 20% discount on all the an academy subscription you will find the pdf of the classes on the an academy subscription so please use this code jstar10 and get your subscription today